Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Bruce with the Bowski Studio. In this painting demonstration, I'm going to show you how I painted this truck behind me. I painted it oil on paper. What I used to uh, paint this painting was a mixed media paper that I had coated with a couple coats of gesso. You can see the little uh, experiments I used for the different types of gesso to test out the absorbency. And then I wrote that name of the gesso on the back of the paper to then indicate when I liked the result in a particular painting that I would have something to uh, refer to to prime more paper in the future. Now, if you've been watching my channel for quite a while, you know that I typically like a lot of urban scenes, things with structure, and uh, one, of the, one of the things I liked about this destination, which by the way is in Owl's Head, Maine, by the Owl's Head Lighthouse, there's a little working cove there and lots of material, took tons of photos, and what I liked about this particular piece here was the way the truck led into the background to this little shack here with the lobster buoys on it. I think, thought it made a very interesting sort of very coastal vibe. And then you have the idea of the working class, the working uh, truck, that sort of thing really appeals to me, finding these found compositions. And you can see behind me that I'm testing out also uh, the vertical palette idea. It's nothing new. Lots of artists have... Uh, used these before but I found it pretty enjoyable liked it a lot I will continue to in the studio try to experiment more with it it really seemed uh, very advantageous to have the paint right there and mix put on the panel you don't have to look down look up look down look up or uh, also that it's in the same light that is shining on your painting so that was very convenient also like to take a minute here and uh, thank the people that are new watching for the first time I really appreciate it if you like what you see in the video, I invite you to subscribe and uh, you can see future content. You can also, everybody can find me on uh, Facebook at Abowski Studio and on Instagram at Abowski Studio. There's going to be some things I post on Instagram and on Facebook that you're not going to see in videos. So uh, check those out, leave some comments, and uh, if you like it, share it with your artist friends. Okay, let's get started. Okay, with this piece, I'm doing this format a little different, having the inset picture of me uh, doing the voice voiceover. I uh, just thought it would be a little more interesting. Um, what I wanted to do in this piece was to create the feel of a plein air painting, as if I'm there on scene, of course, painting it from life. And uh, normally with this type of subject matter, with the trucks and vehicles, I tend to do a very careful, gridded drawing to get the composition uh, just right. It's very important. Uh, but I really just wanted to hone the skills and I'm blocking it in with uh, dioxazine purple and I'll try to uh, mention later on uh, get the color pal palette that I used I uh, wasn't too concerned I pretty much just used some uh, a red and blue of uh, each primary and then of course some dioxazine purple uh, just kind of finding my way trying to keep the paint, paint somewhat loose uh, with a little turpentine gives me options to uh, buff out if I need to to make corrections. I tend to find that useful when I'm uh, blocking in, keeping it somewhat thin. A lot of artists do that. And I just want to let people know too that I, for everyone viewing, if you're interested in this painting, this oil on paper, 6x8, I am offering for sale $125 unframed with free shipping in the United States. So if you're interested in owning an original of mine, just contact me and uh, we'll work things out. I usually use PayPal, so it keeps it very simple. So let me know. Now, as you can see, I'm starting to get some uh, base tones, massing in some uh, shadows of the fender of the truck, and I'll be saving the, the light tones for later. But just mixing and pulling over and getting establishing some darks. Uh, I tend to sometimes go back and forth, but typically I try to get my darks in uh, right away to give me some kind of key to base the other colors on. Now, I wasn't really super interested in getting a super accurate color representation of the truck. I wanted to make it a little more lively. Uh, sometimes in my pa uh, paintings, I tend to be a little too naturalistic with color. So I really wanted to explore kind of making it uh, more energetic that way. And you can see in the reference photo on top of the hood of the truck, it's very kind of uh, pitted and rusted with rust spots. And I left those out because I didn't want to, in this size of a painting, to disrupt that small shape that's going to be a highlight later on. 
excuse me now here I am just mapping out the little shack behind there and like I mentioned before this is an owl's head along the coast of Maine and I've been here before several times over the years very cool little spot and it's actually not uh, terribly far away if you're kind of camping in the area there's a nice few campgrounds and I've done that before so it puts me in close proximity to go there and take photos and such but I'd love to paint on site also and now I'm just kind of indicating some of the lobster buoys. You can see in the picture that when I look back at the reference photo, it, it, how lined up those buoys are. And I just wanted to extract a few here and there to give the feeling of a coastal environment. I wasn't looking to copy the photo by any means uh, to be an exact repl uh, replica. I think sometimes that's what artists struggle with sometimes. When they're working from a photo, they can sometimes make it too exacting and finding that balance to create some painterly uh, sort of uh, liveliness to seem like I'm trying to do with the sky here. Just want to kind of create some random brushwork, somewhat energetic in this small space. I don't want to go too awful crazy because of the size format, which you'll find for your own painting over time if you're kind of new at it, How what style you work in and your brushwork, how you tend to want to flow with your brushwork, on what sizes that you feel most comfortable working in. And uh, here I am laying in the highlights, and I just love this part. It's like icing a cake. And the key for me is to get that paint a touch fluid and thick, and just put it on there. Don't mess around with it too much. And this is when it's really starting to define the painting. And at this point, when I was painting it, look, uh, remembering back, I was so excited to pop those highlights in there. It was really, really a lot of fun. One thing I've always enjoyed any time I've ever painted uh, vehicles is what I'm doing right now when I paint the little headlight in there and get the color tones in. It really is kind of a nice little sparkle that adds some, uh, brings the truck to life, any kind of like vehicle that I've painted in the past. And it's really an enjoyable experience because you're finding those little bits of color. It's like that little headlight is an abstract painting and you're just looking at little bits of shape to suggest the reflections or the way the lights refracting in there and it's really kind of a fun uh, fun little experience to to do now just kind of sometimes too when you're working on uh, images like this it can be like you feel like you just putting paint down and just filling in like I am right here with this shack and I was trying to be conscious of when I'm mixing up some paint, sometimes you don't mix up maybe enough. Uh, even if you did, you want to I put some, as you can see in the painting, some a little here, a little there, and then I'll come back in with the varying shades of other colors to add interest to that side of that shack to suggest weathering and texture. And it seemed to work out okay. I was pretty happy with it. And I'm just cutting around the lobster buoys, and that will then pop them out by default. Um, grass here, you know, like it's very, if you're not careful because you can see detail doesn't mean you paint it. So I'm just trying to be pretty expressive and loose with the grass. I don't get too overly complicated with it. Don't want to take away too much from the truck, obviously. And uh, just enough suggestion that you know what's going on to uh, make it interesting for the viewer. One of my favorite things about the, this painting was how I chose to crop the painting. You know, the crop the truck um, and having it blow off the scene. I think that adds a little life and movement to the piece and really kind of kind of invigorates the composition, doesn't make it stagnant and stale. And a lot of my paintings tend to do that. They, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call them odd cropping, but I really like to blow in on my subject and find interesting cutoff points uh, to add that contemporary feel and to try to make it a more of a design element having different pieces of shape like when I look back and play back here and I see how the skies kind of chiseled out little bits of sky and then organic shapes against the structure of the truck I really am pleased with uh, the effect that I got and I hope you're enjoying it watching the process. My working setup, like you can see, of course, the vertical palette off to the left there. And in the right hand corner, you see part of my tablet that I use for reference 
I used to print my photos out and most of most of the reason I don't anymore is I just kind of got lazy but then by default I did a painting before from my uh, photo on my tablet and I just felt it was, had more life in it than a printed photograph you really get cleaner color it, it was more of a representation of what it was like that day there not that I'm going to copy the color exactly but it gives me a reference point that's more accurate to then deconstruct and make it my own and uh, it really is nice I have a little holder clamp to the vertical upright and that's I can adjust it more towards me or away from me and that's really handy uh, it does kind of a uh, timeout sometimes you just got to log back in and refresh your image it's no big deal but very handy to have that for sure I'd like to hear from all my viewers out there what you might do to suggest to other people watching my channel if you paint subjects like this how you go about handling them for certain details I think that might be useful for uh, everybody all the artistic community out there uh, as a collaborative whole you know we get a lot of information that can help each other and it's really handy that's what I love about uh, being on YouTube and uh, pre-COVID when I was doing the gallery scene quite a bit uh, it was nice kind of uh, going to openings and talking to other artists and about gear about techniques very helpful and uh, enjoyable spending time talking shop for sure so that's what I really like about talking to artists is you just never know where you're going to get ideas for interesting topics that you might pursue for paintings. So always going to have your eyes open and, and, and ears and all that good stuff. Now my thoughts on painting on the uh, gessoed paper was the idea that when I go plain air painting I usually paint on MDF panels. And I could, as you see it in the... Uh, video with the blue tape taping off taping it to the panel the idea I'm having is to in my paint box when I put my panels in there I would have a uh, gesso paper on one side taped and another one on the other side taped so basically one panel provides two paintings and uh, if you wanted to which I've done in the past uh, there's all kinds of little uh, tips and tricks on on the internet and YouTube about taking these pieces of paper and mounting them to a panel if you wanted to or you can just mat them like a under glass sort of idea and that creates a nice effect also but experiment see what you like the biggest thing I experimented with uh, was toning my papers with uh, several brands of as you saw in the beginning of the video several brands of gesso to uh, give me an idea which ones are going to be the absorbency that I like the most because uh, some suck in the paint more than others others a little more smoother feels the paint glides across and the texture wise I didn't try to smooth them out too much I just applied the gesso and then I have like a sanding block that you might buy at Home Depot and I just kind of lightly took the high nubs off I didn't press down a lot just enough so if there is slight strokes in there that might add a nice effect when I'm toning the panel. I might save some of that effect or when I apply a thinner color. But typically the, the sort of thick strokes I use would cover that up. And you can create your own new texture. So totally up to Of course each artist is going to be doing their own thing that way. But I want to try to create more of an interesting brushwork. So now here what I'm doing is working on the interior of the cab and this was a lot of fun because this is where you get that control work going on just a little bit in conjunction with the nice loose brush work like for instance in the sky. And uh, it's again sort of like a little more icing on the cake because now I'm getting into the detail of the steering wheel, little bits of highlight on that and going to be putting in the wiper blades that are on the truck. Um, you can get into if like in the photo it's really hard to tell in a reference photo but there might be a little sheen coming off the curvature of the windshield that isn't really represented in my painting but sometimes you you can make it too complicated and I was trying to simplify that shape area again because of the size of the paper I was working on and when you look at some people like when, uh, Hopper's paintings when he's painting 
uh, buildings and such. He's not. He doesn't. He's not concerned with like the true reflection off the of glass sometimes. So it's interesting because it's realism, but it's not really. It's the artist's vision of what he wants to paint and show the viewer. So again, it's just being not a slave to the photo. So it's something to think about for your own paintings. Now this part was quite fun, working on the buoys and kind of extracting some colors that I see in my reference photograph. Technically, if someone lived in the area and, you know, from what I hear, I'm not a lobster fisherman, but the banding on the lobster buoys represents certain people own the traps and who knows what, but I just wanted to make more of a painting. I wasn't worried about all that technical nautical sort of idea and just kind of make it what it needs to be for a painting. So I kind of uh, quite like how uh, the selection process turned out. And you can see I have like five buoys. I like odd numbers in paintings. Uh, I think it adds a little more interest being a little asymmetrical. Okay, now I'm just going to be kind of wrapping up this painting and putting some finishing touches here and there. Finishing up the buoys and putting a little more detail work on the little uh, boom on the back of the truck. Getting that cleaned up a bit. Putting in a little detail and finishing it off. Okay, so we're going to be uh, wrapping up this video again. Thanks for watching. If you're new, I invite you to subscribe. And just mention again, this painting is for sale, 125 unframed, free shipping in the U.S. So if you're interested, contact me uh, through the, my YouTube channel, or you'll see the links from my uh, email and such and Instagram. So until the next painting video, take care, and happy painting.